now, or Dr. Bladen Zamande, I should say. Uh, doctor, thank you for your time. This acronym is not the easiest to say, NIS, but this yes. is behind those uh, PhD scholarship programs. Tell us more. Yes, thanks, Erin, and thanks actually for covering this matter because it's one of the important issues that I do not think they get the required attention. The NIHSS is a program that I established in 2013. After I had done some research showing that just like it's happening in the rest of the world, there is a decline in the study of humanities and social sciences as societies and countries focus on the more science, technology, engineering and mathematics subjects. And then I was of the view and the research was telling me, yes, we must emphasize on the science subjects, natural sciences, but we can't allow uh, humanities and social sciences to go down, even worse for a country like South Africa, mm. given our own history and our own challenges. So I established this institute then with a particular focus to strengthen research into social sciences and humanities and also to actually provide and support doctoral graduates in particular so that we are able to produce humanities and social sciences at the highest possible level. Of course, for me now, as Minister for Higher Education, Science and Technology, mm -hmm. this works well because also I am now, I have the National Research Foundation, which actually funds generally your postgraduate studies from honors to masters to PhDs in all fields, including both humanities and also your, your STEM sciences. And really what is at the heart of this is that if South Africa is to develop economically and be one of the countries to be, to be, to be counted in the world, we do need doctoral degrees in thousands and thousands because usually there it means you are investing more into research and development which means also you are laying a better basis for innovation and it also means that you are actually likely to have even your universities and colleges with adequately educated people to actually to be able to to train others so it's very important and I'm very proud of the achievements by the way of the NIHSS we established it in 2013, but already by this year, it has actually realized the graduation of, of its number 200 mm. doctoral graduate in humanities and social sciences. And also, one of the tasks, by the way, they've given themselves, which is a very important one. Under apartheid, you may be aware, Erin, there were lots of books, manuscripts, theses, and so on, poems, and everything that was banned. Never saw the light of day. Some of them, till today, and we have given them the task to say, all those things that were banned under apartheid, please make sure that they are republished because they are a very important part of our history so that we know who we are and where we come from. So there's an archival bent to this as well. Absolutely. Yeah. You have got it right. In fact, that's the right description, you know, because that is very important because, as it is often said, a nation that does not understand its past has no future. And where does the uh, sort of first language mother tongue publication of PhDs and academic work fit into the plans of the higher education department? Because that's something that's also come up as quite an important focus area in South African academia. Yes, that's right. In fact, we are very pleased that some universities are taking the lead. I can't mention all of them, but I know that University of KwaZulu-Natal is actually now doing some courses in both English and African languages. We also have got now a first PhD written in Sotswana. That's something that is very important. A few years ago, around 2014, 2015, I appointed a team, a task team, a ministerial task team, to actually investigate how to strengthen the use of African languages as, la as languages of science, languages of academia, languages of business, and languages of scholarship. And they have now recommended to me, and we've started now implementing and creating a policy framework to actually encourage the use of African languages, not only just the use, but to develop them to actually become languages of science, like it happened with Afrikaans, by the way, over the last hundred years, which was just a language that was just broken Dutch in the kitchens, now it has become a language of science. I am very committed and we have a policy as the department to actually strengthen.
uh, the languages, including publishing, because mm -hmm. that's another problem. You know, we have to increase opportunities to publish in African languages because that space of publishing has been narrowing, unfortunately, and we need to, re to reopen it again. Minister, I want to ask, in terms of the priorities of your ministry, how do you grapple the priorities of getting PhD students, particularly with that NDP goal of, I think it's 100 PhDs per year, and then also retaining undergraduate students, because students get lost along the way. This week there have been photographs and reports about VIT students in the humanities faculty sleeping on, uh, you know, bean bags with duvets or, you know, sleeping bags over them, struggling to make ends meet and get through that first phase of higher education. So how do you judge which money to put into PhDs and that sort of work toward the NDP goal and also retaining students in undergraduate level which for many families is the first port of call. Yes, that's a very important question because we need to strike the right balance. As you are possibly aware, the National Student Financial Aid Scheme now next year is going into the third year with a new bursary scheme which is funding much bigger numbers of, of students because we have increased the criteria mm. for being supported and that's very important. Okay. With the fees must fall struggles, one of its biggest achievements was actually to increase funding at undergraduate level. But the unintended consequences is that some of the funds, for instance, that I had put aside for postgraduate studies had to be absorbed into undergraduate studies. And that is what I'm working at now to actually correct, to say, yes, we must strengthen supported undergraduate, but we also have to increase yes. at postgraduate level within the same port that we have because we don't have limitless amounts of money. In fact, one thing that the NISSS has contributed is that without creating that, and setting aside money from the National Skills Fund wouldn't be having these 200 doctoral graduates that we are having now. So the balance is very important. In fact, what is also likely to happen is that as we increase the number of undergraduates that we are supporting, there is going to be more pressure to get them through to, to PhD. Uh, through to PhDs, especially those who would like to. And we are encouraging them, you know, to say don't just step stop with your, with your degree. If you have got an edge and a commitment to actually uh, be able to move up, please do take up your honors and masters mm -hmm. and doctoral studies because we do need to increase that. We, we even need it, by the way, in terms of expanding our university system. You can't expand the university system unless you have the academics. And we'll only have the academics if you sponsor your doctoral graduates. Minister, we're short on time, so just one last quick question, and that is, do you think that you're especially sympathetic to this program for the humanities and social sciences, because you yourself, of course, have studied sociology so in depth? Well, firstly, what I would <laughs> like to say is that I'm sympathetic to doctoral degrees in whatever across the area, board. you know, across the board, and that's important, as I've said, for our country. Personally, myself, you know, mm -hmm. being a PhD, holder, I know what a PhD can do. But in, of course I am particularly interested as a humanities and social sciences person in that as well because humanities are, and social sciences are very important to assist us as a country to grapple with the many social economic challenges that we are actually facing by making sure that we are able to analyze those so that we are able to actually come with better answers so that we create a South Africa that we want which has got a better life for all. Thank you, Minister. And of course, as you say, not to the expense of science and technology and the like. Absolutely. Science and technology is very important. We can't do the one at the expense of the other. Much as we have got to increase a lot more mm -hmm. on your science, technology, engineering, I accept that. But we can't do that then by simply then just allowing a, a, a huge decline in the teaching of humanities. In fact, a combination of the two creatively is what we need in our country in the right numbers that are required. Dr. Blade and Zamande there giving a strong call to reach all the way to PhD level and talking about some of the funding efforts of his department. Minister, thank you for your time.